America's Evil Genius back with you again for another special comment. And I know I keep telling you that I'm going to do this uh, war within the middle class uh, presentation, and I am, but you know, this week's been strange because it seems like every day another topic comes up that is so important and so uh, huge politically that, that it requires my commentary. So we're going to go ahead today and do another one of these special commentaries in which uh, we don't have any bells or whistles or anything, but I'll give you my brief analysis and, and take on something. And then, of course, this weekend we are going to do that full presentation on the war within the middle class. Again, that uh, should be released Sunday at some point, if not before. But the reason I wanted to talk today and, and to put something very briefly out there is the uh, very interesting thing that happened where Barack Obama, President Obama, uh, for the first time publicly came out, okay, that's a poor choice of words, but uh, Barack Obama supported gay marriage for the first time today, uh, at least publicly. And uh, that's uh, interesting for a lot of reasons. Now, I don't want to spend this presentation talking about my personal opinion of gay marriage. Uh, if you've watched the show in the past, you undoubtedly know where I stand on the issue that my opinion on the subject is something that probably pisses off people on both sides of the political aisle. Uh, for the record, I am against gay marriage, mainly because of the word marriage. Uh, on the other hand, I am in favor of some sort of arrangement, you can call it a civil union or, or whatever you want to call it, but some sort of arrangement that allows any two people who wish to do so, uh, you know, to, to combine their property, combine their assets, uh, you know, gives you all the same property rights and, and, and rights in terms of, you know, when you're in the hospital or, or death issues, things like that. I'm totally in favor of that type of arrangement. I just don't want it called marriage. That's, that's where the drawing line is for me. That's where the, the breaking point is for me. So anything up to that, I'm all right with it. So uh, there's, a, there's my take on the actual issue itself, which will piss everybody off on both sides, I'm sure. But instead, what I wanted to talk about today was how this is going to play from a, a perspective of political strategy and how I think this marks a very uh, interesting shift in Barack Obama's political strategy opposed to uh, his strategy in 2008. As we said earlier, Barack Obama has never come out in favor of gay marriage before, although a lot of people, myself included, have always felt like he was in favor of it, just didn't really think he could say it. And the reason I'm suspecting he didn't think he could say it was because it would hurt him in terms of getting voters in, in certain places, uh, in the South, in the Midwest. It would hurt his crossover appeal, if you want to say that. And make no mistake, in 2008, Barack Obama won the presidency in large part because of his crossover appeal. Yes, he got the Democratic base to get apoplectic and vote for him. Yes, he got the youth to come out. Yes, he got the uh, African Americans to come out. But he got a lot of uh, mainstream suburban Americans across the country to come out for him as well. And that put him over the top. So it's interesting to me to see this type of position being taken by Obama that likely is going to be at odds with so many of those mainstream Americans, particularly in the parts of the country where Obama needs to retain electoral votes. And I think it marks a very different strategy for him. I, I think it marks a bit of a Hail Mary play, if you will. I think it marks a bit of desperation on Barack Obama's part. Now, let me explain. I've told you on this show before that uh, I don't believe Barack Obama will have the opportunity to win any electoral votes that he did not win in 2008. That means he's got to retain 270 electoral votes of the around 359 or whatever it was that he won uh, last time. So that means the Republicans, in order to win, they've got to take 90 electoral votes from Obama. I'm not going to go rehash all of that, but that's the basic math of it all. Now, a position like this does not seem like it would do well in some of the, the key states that Obama's got to retain, particularly in the South. I mean, just yesterday, North Carolina voted down gay marriage. And North Carolina was a state that Obama won in 2008. So I wonder if Obama can pretty well kiss North Carolina goodbye. Does that mean he can kiss Virginia goodbye? Does it mean he can kiss Florida goodbye? Well, if he loses those three and he's shut out of the South, wow, this thing's all but done. And the interesting thing I'm seeing here is that, that, that on, the, on the base of it, you would wonder why Barack Obama would undertake a strategy that would all but shut him out of mainstream America in the South and the Midwest. And I know it, the, an idea in favor of gay marriage would be mainstream in places like the Northeast or the West Coast, but those are places that Barack Obama already has sewn up. We're not even challenging him there. He's going to have those electoral votes no matter what happens. But in places like the Midwest and the South, 
the viewpoint of gay marriage being a, in favor of it or a positive thing, that's not a mainstream viewpoint. So Barack Obama is essentially shutting himself out to mainstream Americans in those parts of the country. And so you have to wonder why. Well, I think amateur political strategist as I am, I think I might have come up with, a, with an idea of why he's doing it. I think that Barack Obama at this stage, given the last three years, I think he deep down understands that his appeal across the board, his appeal to all different genders and ethnicities and races and socioeconomic classes and urban and rural and uh, suburban voters and all those different people, I think that massive crossover appeal he had last time, he realizes it's gone. He realizes it's gone in 2012. He's not going to get it back. So the only real card he has left to play, and it's a long shot, but the only real card he has to, left to play is to go to the fringes of society, which he's always appealed to anyway, go to the fringes of society and try to get as much turnout from them as he can and hope that can make up enough of the difference from the mainstream Americans that he loses to just barely squeak by. Now, will that work? Well, I doubt it, although it is, I suppose, mathematically possible. But uh, the interesting thing to me is that those fringes that we talk about, be it uh, the gay and lesbian vote or uh, be it the minority vote, uh, particularly African Americans, or uh, you know, be it, let's say, the, the female vote in terms of females that uh, are in favor of forced birth control being provided to them and in favor of, of all sorts of feminist sort of things, uh, those sorts of people, I don't know that they reside in terms of population density in the Midwest and the South. So I think that hurts them. Now, some of you are, are jumping up and down and screaming at me at calling you know, gays a fringe vote and, and African Americans a fringe vote and women a fringe vote. Let me explain. I'm talking about fringe in terms of pure numbers, okay? And I'm not saying women are a fringe vote. I'm saying that specific group of women who think birth control should be provided for them and who are in favor of abortion, that's a pretty fringe group. It's a pretty low number. That's something the Democrats don't want you to know. So the bottom line is the only real shot Obama has left is to piece together a high enough turnout from enough of these fringes and from the youth, which is critical to him, and they'll be in favor of, of a stance like this, to piece together enough of that to just barely squeak in. But I don't know that those fringes will come out in a high enough volume in places like North Carolina or Virginia or Indiana or the central and northern parts of Florida uh, or, or even parts of Ohio or, or some of the other rural and midwestern areas, Missouri, for a great example. I don't think there's any way he wins this state. So it is a Hail Mary play. It is fourth and long with one second left in the clock. But if that's the only strategy you've got left, I guess you got to take it. Um, so it will be interesting to see how this plays out. I know some people across the nation are just jumping for joy at this. Uh, but again, I think in terms strictly of an electoral map, I don't think it does anything to help him. I think the, the people in the mainstream who are going to like this are people who live in areas that he's already got sewn up. But the people in mainstream, in the mainstream, in places that he does not have sewn up in the South, in the Midwest, in the rural parts of America, I think he can kiss that support goodbye. And most importantly, when he kisses that support goodbye, I think he kisses the presidency goodbye. Okay, that's it for this time around. I swear I'm not going to do another one of these uh, quick commentaries until we get our next show out, unless, of course, another political bombshell drops to I mean, at this point, what could it be? The John Edwards trial? Are we going to find out that he had an affair with Hillary Clinton or something? Ooh, I just threw up a little in my mouth over that one. Uh, we'll see you next time, America. This is America's Evil Genius.